you can never have enough pitching. Hello, guys, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlock. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, there are some rumors that seem more than just rumors. They seem like legit rumors that Kirby Yates could be coming to the Blue Jays very, very soon. But before we dive into what this could mean for us, please make sure to drop a like, a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on those post notifications, and always become a Patreon. It's The link is right down in the description. $3 a month, become a Patreon, get your question answered on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So, Nick, mm -hmm. when you heard that Kirby Yates, because you were the first one to message me, when you heard that Kirby Yates was potentially going to be signed with the Blue Jays? Yeah. What were your thoughts? Well, uh, I mean, that's that's excellent. Uh, it seems... I, I had an initial thought, and we'll get into it uh, a little bit further. <laughs> that thought was... Uh, Wow, do we have some hankering for relief pitchers all of a sudden? <laughs> because I'm um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but yesterday we also signed somebody who will be going into our bullpen. Uh, Tyler Chatwood is his yeah, name. Yeah, Tyler um, Chatwood. I mean, you not even gonna make a video on him. Literally, I mean, it's good to mention. I mean, he'll be a long reliever. Yeah. So or good for you. That's the intention. Uh, Please don't start. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyways, so. Uh, Looks like we're bringing him into Dunedin. Uh, we're going to be talking with him a lot. It seems like this could be something potentially finalized by the end of today, which is January 19th, uh, mm -hmm. or if not today, uh, in the very near future, if mm -hmm. we are to get him. Um, and Kirby Yates is great, man. Like in 2019, he was an all star. Uh, his mm -hmm. one year as an all star, but it was very, very good. Uh, granted, 2020, not a great year. He dealt with uh, an injury. Um, that's a yuck injury, actually. Yeah, he, like, had, he had to get like uh, bone chips removed from his elbow disgusting. in August, which is like when I picture, I'm like, I'm picturing his elbow literally crumbling, and I'm like, oh my God. So hopefully yeah. that has nothing, you know, does not impact his pitching. Well, or his I, I was going to say that, um, and, you know, I read this. Too, is like, <laughs> like I, I want to get a physical done on this guy yes, before yes, we it, sign anything. Before yeah. we get him onto anything, I want to see a physical. I want to see him in person. I want to be like, okay, <laughs> this still, is working. It still operates <laughs> accordingly because, yeah, like that's disgusting. And he pitched for like a 12 ERA last year accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but he should be healthy now. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, we're not supposed to give him uh, Hendricks money, which was like the 13, like approximately around 13 million a year. No, no, no. I don't um, think he'll get. There, Close to that. There was a uh, um there was reporters like speculating somewhere in like the eight million per year dollar range, which is honestly like super okay. That's less than Ken Giles was for us. So like, you know, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I'll take an all-star for that money. And you know, if he bounces back, he's a great veteran presence to have in that bullpen to kind of anchor that bullpen with a bunch sure. of young guys sure yeah so, and uh, and he's truly dominant when he is healthy and you saw that in 2019 like i was looking back at his expected stuff like his percentiles which we love here and they were all top tier you know a hundredth percent in expected era a hundredth percent in expected slugging 99th percentile and expected batting average yeah and the numbers followed suit he had a 1.19 era that season 41 saves i believe that led the yep. league yep. Uh, and he had 101 strikeouts through 60 innings so that is some elite level production and if he does come back healthy um then yeah like if, if we can get him on any sort of a discount because of this potential injury then that's a steal yes it is absolutely and you know, thinking about Kirby Yates coming into to, to Toronto, you know, obviously this will be our biggest signing, not necessarily our blockbuster signing that, you know, hopefully is going to come later this week. But I'm excited. I think this is great for the Toronto Blue Jays. I think it's great for young core. Like I've been saying, bring more veterans. Come on. Like, I, I understand you want to go young. And yes, we've done that. But now let's bring in those veterans. Let, let's get them solidified in that bullpen. Yeah, Yates is solid, dude. And honestly, I think also that we might, like, I know that they were saying 8 million and stuff, but I think we could even get him cheaper for that because he played for 7 mil last year True. on a one year deal and he sucked and he got <laughs> injured. So, True. if there's any time to get him at a discount, it's like, why would we be paying more than 7 mil per year yeah. after he got hurt, after he was bad? You know, it's like, I would imagine maybe that even goes down. 
Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm down. But uh, I'm down. like, you know, something like a two year, like 13 mil, million dollar deal would be oh, like that's excellent. right in the ballpark that, of where I would like him. That's almost half what we're paying Tanner Roark. And Tanner Roark is going to hurt our team more than Kirby Yates hurt his elbow. So completely agree. You know, my, my one question, though, is like, why all of a sudden are we attacking these bullpen guys? You know, I know that we. Like we've talked a lot on this podcast about yeah. some some of the needs and bullpen hasn't necessarily been one of them. Um, I like our bullpen a lot. I like some of the yeah. guys that we have. Why do you think that the Blue Jays are going after these guys right now? You can never have enough pitching. Never, never, ever, ever. You think your bullpen's fine? It's not. You can never have enough pitching. The best teams in the postseason have rock solid Eight, like two options as like their six inning man. They have solid seven, eight, nine guys that are rock. They're three closers. And then you have options to rotate in and out of that. Mm -hmm. Never can have enough pitching with Kirby Yates locking down the closing role. Then you have Romano in the setup or Dolis coming in in the seventh. And then you still have people like Hatch. You still have like many, many more options. Well, and, and I, I can more tell you right here. Too. You got Hatch, Cole, there Yamaguchi, you Anthony K, Baraki, Wegas Pack, Manweather, Reed Foley, and Tyler Chatwood, who we just got yesterday. Yeah, I think and he's going to be on the end. <laughs> I think that the fact that we're going out and that we're targeting some of these guys speaks to me. Um, it kind of leads itself to the potential storyline of maybe some of these other guys, like we've talked before, could be moving into a starting pitching role. That would create some opportunities for somebody like a Ryan Barucki or... I don't know, a hatch or somebody to potentially take that next step if we're not able to go out and acquire a starting pitcher through free agency. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, it all depends on what they decide to do with their call-ups. Like, you know, you, obviously we have um, Simeon Woods Richardson. Obviously we have um, um, Alex Manoa, you know, Kloffenstein. Whether they decide to get called up, join the bullpen, push some guys in that fourth, fifth spot to try and, like, audition for that spot. Mm -hmm. It's The thing is... Now we don't have a problem. <laughs> like yeah, and you know? and it also it lends itself to um, Montoya's style of management, yeah. which is let's pull them after like three innings our starters. <laughs> oh you know, God, please no and six six. But if it's Ryu seven eight, let them go the distance. Well, but but I think that you know by going through and getting more bullpen options. Um, you know, we may like that style of management, that, that theory about that, what he's doing, right. maybe it works a little bit better because as we saw our bullpen, as time went on, got more, got tired. They, they got, got exhausted as, as time went on yeah. because we were, we were using them too much. Yeah. If we have more, a larger pool of guys to use a larger, more talented pool of guy to use then maybe that doesn't happen as much. See, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I just think it's like whether you have a larger pool of talent, like I think the only guy, I think the only guy last year I said that I didn't like in the bullpen was like Wilmer Font and Wegas Pack. Those are the two yeah, guys. I, I don't that love them. When <laughs> everyone else was like, you know, mid threes and below a ERA, which were excellent. excellent and Yamaguchi options. wasn't. And then, uh, Yamaguchi wasn't also too. But like those guys were only in if we were up by 10 or down by 10, right? So the only reason why I don't like Charlie Montoya's style of. of well, I'm not, like, I'm not saying oh, yeah. I like his style. Oh, yeah. I'm saying that I think that by going out and getting these guys, it's lending itself to do that style more. I'm not saying of I course, agree of course. with oh, it. Of course. At okay, all. okay. We're on the same page. Yes. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like uh, to add on to that, that I don't like his style because you're, even though if you have quality guys, they're going to get tired regardless. You know, everyone's going to get tired if you pitch them so often. So. Please, Charlie, he's not going to listen to this. What am I kidding myself? But I'll say it anyways. Please consider letting Ryu go seven, eight innings if he's performing well. We're not going to have him back, but Shoemaker, maybe go at least five in, in a wild card game that matters. It, he's not going to listen to me, but... Uh, no, no, I don't think I'm he's going to listen at all. And, and I think what I'm saying is that by going out and getting these guys, it's it's giving him more reign to go out and do that. <sighs> and I hate that, um, because you know, I don't because, want that. Uh, I, like, it, it speaks for itself. When you have a lot of talented guys in your bullpen, you, you want to give them opportunities. And, yeah. and Kirby Yates is a guy that you know you want to see out there. And, and if he's out there in the closing role, then that allows us to use Romano a bit more for the setup and at least yeah. and it just so forth so forth so like, forth. Yeah, so. like that like that back end the back half three innings with like Delise, Romano and Yates if we get him. Like yeah, they're gonna be pitching a lot. And then what's great is that we have depth so that 
you know, if our starter ideally goes six innings, then we can like swap guys out if they're tired. Like sure. you can put like Hatch or Cole in those like setup roles, which is excellent. And, you know, I really hope that we kind of adjust midway. You know, obviously, I don't think he's going to go extreme and let pitchers go eight, nine innings. Like he, No, no, you know. not at all. That's but, not going to happen. <laughs> but I hope he learns after the feedback from what happened in the wild card series that sometimes it's best to kind of use our eyes and, and, and rotate guys out a bit more and rest them. Hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. Um, although, I, I'll be honest, I, I won't be disappointed if we take them out and put in Kirby Yates. No, yeah, I mean, in the ninth inning, I want Kirby Yates there all day, every day. Yeah. Speaking so. of, uh, like, I, I noticed, uh, like, in his career, you know, for the first half of it anyways, uh, he was average, he was okay, mm-hmm. like, not definitely not great. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting to note, uh, like, what changed for him, because you were talking beforehand that in 2017... Kirby Yates all of a sudden got really good. And it was right around there that he stopped using his slider mm. and started using his sinker. Right, using... Or, I'm sorry, splitter. Splitter more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, it's awesome. Yeah, the split fastball, as you can see right behind us, if you're noticing, is a confirmation of his split fastball. It's one of the best in the game. Yeah. Um, he uses it about 37% of the time, and it's super... It, like, that whole... That, that change for him in 2017 was... Because he was literally... He only used his two pitches, which is his four-seamer and his splitter. Yeah. And beforehand, it was the four-seamer and um, the slider. Yeah. And he completely, he just totally changed. He's like, I'm no awesome. longer using the slider at all. Now I'm using the splitter. Yeah. And just completely changed it. He's, and automatically the results show. He's just a fastball pitcher now. I mean, slider, you know, you look at the movement of a slider and it cuts inwards, right? And the fastball just stays afloat. But now with the combination of fastball and splitter, you know, splitter, it, splitter is a fastball, but it's just, you know, it's got that dip movement into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that late action, which you can see here. Like, I'm going to watch this game, but the dummy, this guy. Oh, oh, murdered. <laughs> but it's got such great movement to it. Um, so, yeah, of course. You know, you can, you see that a lot of Marcus Stroman, too. Marcus Stroman's is like a, a mm. split fastball. Or he's more of a sinker, but uh, splitter, similar grips. But, uh, no, he's amazing. Yeah, I just, I thought that was really interesting because very rarely do you see somebody, compo- like, 1000% switch the pitch that they use yeah. and have such drastic results. Sometimes so. it's all you need, you know, Mar- Mar- <laughs> Rivera, one of the greatest closers of all time, you know, uh, he, he had a cutter and like, as soon as he started using his cutter is became one of the greatest of all time. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really excited. I hope we do confirm check phone. Nope. Not yet. Nothing yet. Uh, Nothing but I yet. do, I do hope we get Kirby Yates. It will be nice because once Kirby Yates is signed, like we've seen with every other kind of franchise, every other ball club this year, they all have kind of fallen under the similar pattern. They make one move, and then the domino effect of move happens. Right? The big moves happen. You know, you look at San Diego with you know Snell and, and, and Darvish and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and Kim. You know, same thing could happen for us. So I'm hoping that Yates kind of triggers the management to now yeah. go. Okay, we pulled this trigger. Now it's time to pull and, the trigger on uh, George Springer. Yeah, and rumors say that George Springer is potentially looking at yeah. at signing his deal uh, by the end of this week. Um, I don't know how accurate that is. Like, I think if the deal is crap, then he's not going to be like, oh, shucks, it's Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to sign, sign anyways. Right, right. Um, but he, he's but coming he's, down to he's it. Coming, it's coming down to the wire. It's looking like it's between us and the Mets. Or that's what the yeah. media is reporting anyways. So hopefully by the end of this week, we will not only have Kirby Yates on the team, oh. but also George Springer. That would be really, really then nice. We, then we'd be finally in that conversation of winners in the offseason, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. great. I, I do believe we won last offseason with the Ryu signing. I really want to win this offseason with a Yates, a Springer, and who knows? Maybe even another pitcher, just like a walker or something. That'd be great. Would Couldn't agree more. I think that would be an excellent, excellent Yes. Off season for the Toronto Blue Jays. Absolutely. But, uh, guys, please let us know what you think of the comments down below about potentially getting Kirby Yates. Hopefully, by the time this video is out, he will already be on the team, which would be awesome. But yes. uh, let us know your thoughts down below. And guys, make sure to follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Radio Public, and Breaker. And also make sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter. That's all in the description down below. And again, if you want to support the podcast, it's $3 a month for a patreon subscription it's less than a coffee and you get to have your questions supported on this podcast and answered as well by us academics in Mm -hmm. baseball Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so much for watching and go jays go